Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyrie Dieti. I am a safety and security trainer and uh, consultant. I'm making this video to discuss um, the new Obey system. That's the open exam system as designed by um, Nebosh. So um, I'm going to make this video uh, as short as possible, uh, between 12 to 15 minutes. I'm going to be discussing basically the essentials, what you need to know about the new system, uh, um, important information, exam techniques, how are you supposed to answer uh, um, the questions, and what are those basic information that you need to make sure you maximize uh, 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 um, the your chances of excelling in this particular uh, um, exam and exam style and all that. Okay, so this video is for people that will be writing the new syllabus IG1 and then the old syllabus IGC1. I'm going to go straight to the point. Um, first things first, you need to note important dates. What are those important dates? The very first exam is going to be held on the 6th of August. That's the very first open book um, um, exam. Now, Within a few days after your registration, three, four, uh, uh, five, depending on when your cost provider registers you, um, the boss is going to send you um, login details. Now, these login details are very, very important because it's with the login details that you're going to get access to your exam questions and your booklet. It's also with the login details that you'll be submitting your answers. So your course provider will tell you when to expect these login details and always make sure that uh, a day before or in that particular day, if you still haven't gotten these details, you put a call through to ensure that you were registered in the first place. Now, uh, um. About two, uh, seven days after the exams, uh, you're going to be given a deadline uh, for seven days after the exam for submitting your practical. That is both the IG2 for the new syllabus and the IG3 for the old um, syllabus. So you want to make sure that your practicals are ready uh, within that time um, frame. Also, you're going to be having a closing interview after the exam itself. So, uh, which would be about 14 days thereabouts. Uh, between 14 days, excuse me, after your exam, your course provider will communicate with you uh, the timing for this particular um, interview. So, but it has to be within 14 days there about after the exam. So, for this new, uh, the, the open book exam, exam that will be written on the 6th of August, so your course provider has till about 21st of August to give you that interview time frame. So you want to make sure that you're in contact with them so that you are not omitted from this procedure as this could affect your uh, result and uh, all of that. So basically, excuse me, you want to note this important date and then you want to make sure that you are uh, always a step ahead of the entire um, process itself. All right, so um, for the exams itself, like I said earlier in this um, video, the exam is going to be an open book exam. Open book meaning that you're going to have access to um, materials, your reading materials, your manuals, your notes from class, online sources even. Uh, um, do this a cap to this uh, um, now most people keep asking the question both uh, the faq or neighbors websites themselves and even my own delegate keep asking if this would in any way affect the integrity or the neighbor certificate in, uh, i can promise you that this does not in any way taint the certificate if you see the sample questions that are sent by neighbors you know that this does not in any way uh, um, affect integrity. Personally, as uh, um, an instructor for a while now, I prefer this style because this style it it it, it makes it, it it helps you as an instructor, uh, as a facilitator. It helps you bring uh, um, it helps you breed safety professionals. Now, uh, a challenge I used to have with the syllabus before was the fact that I had to train my students to be safety professionals and also to cram to go and do the exam. So for the old syllabus, all you had to do was, you know, be able to put a few things on your head and then go and drop it. But for this one, you have to be practical. It's a scenario. You have to play the role of safety officer and all the answers are 
dependent on your understanding of safety uh, uh, um, in general. So personally, I think this particular new syllable, uh, new exam pattern is going to make more professionals uh, 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 out of the entire course program okay so your exam is going to be a scenario uh they're going to paint uh, it's going to be just one scenario they're going to paint the picture of an organization give you uh, all the essential information that you need in that organization now it's not about the ig2 so you're not going to be identifying any kind of hazard per se they're not going to tell you what are the control measures for these are the control measures for that no you're going to be giving a scenario and you're going to answer the questions based on elements one to four of your new ig syllabus or element one to five of the old one as we used to have it so you're basically it's going to be a, the administrative part of safety you know what are the moral legal and economic reasons what are uh, um, the roles and responsibilities of staffs and uh, employers what are the uh, um, reasons for promoting good health and safety like that what are the barriers to good health and safety uh, what does what are the requirements of a policy why should we review our policy culture you know audit investigation inspection risk assessment and all of those things so um the exam, like I said, once again, is going to be a scenario that would paint the picture and then you have to, you know, use the answers you have to uh, 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 um, um, solve the questions that they are going to be giving you based on that particular scenario. I will get to the answering pattern in a bit. Okay, I'm trying to monitor this time to see if I'm not taking too much time. All right, so... Um, the uh the scenario would be would have 10 questions or will carry 100 max to the low to the of 100 max for uh, uh um everything now as we all know for those of us that have written the exams any in the bush exam before when the question says 10 marks it means you need 10 points when the question says five marks you need five points when the question says 15 marks you need 15 valid very 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 valid points now the answering pattern for this particular um, system is an essay format, and then you want to put each of your points in paragraph. I will explain what I mean by that uh, um, in a bit. First things first, I, uh, I use analogy, analogy of the comprehensions that we used to do when we were in secondary school. So you get a comprehension. Uh, we, we, some people even still do it all the way to the uni. So you get a comprehension simple, and then you're asked to answer questions based on that comprehension, right? So you get a comprehension that says this and this and that about one person. So when you get a question, the question says, um, okay, let's say you have a comprehension that says, uh, um, Day is the son of a farmer. Kyrides father goes to the farm every day. Uh, Kyrides, on Thursday, Kyrides father told him not to go to school, but to go to the farm so that he could uh, um, help his father work. Now, question one in the comprehension says, why did Kyrides not go to school? I would say Kyrides did not go to school because this and that and that and that. Basically, you're trying to relate your answer that you have to the comprehension. You're, you're doing the same for this particular exam. You're going to have your answer, and then you're going to have to relate that answer to the scenario. Now, what you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to bring your answer fully from the scenario. No, you don't want to quote the scenario as your answer. That's not what is happening here. What is happening is you have the answer, and you have to fit in that answer to the scenario. Now, why you have to do that is because sometimes you have an answer that absolutely is correct but doesn't fit into that particular scenario right so i also use a general example for the few revisions i've done as regards the ob system i say i have experience in a couple of industry i have experience in say construction manufacturing oil and gas uh, and cool and then i get consulted by a school or i i i get called for a job a consultant um a consultation I'm going to take it slow. A consultant job in a school, and they're talking about their emergency procedure. So I I say they should buy life jacket because life jacket is part of the emergency procedures on a vessel. Now, that's, that's not a wrong equipment for emergency procedure. It's just not right for that particular organization. The same thing goes for your exam. So you can have answers that are correct, but they don't fit in that particular scenario. And remember that all your answers have to fit into the scenario. So you're going to get your answers and then you're good to fit them in. So let me take a syllabus example. Let's say safety culture, for example. What are the indicators of safety culture? Workers complaint, 
uh, uh, um, lack of um, communication, either lack of or uh, uh, um, consultation from the workforce. It could be positive, it could be negative. The number of incidents and accidents, um, sickness rate, absenteeism, and all of that. Now, if the scenario does not give you anything about workers complaining, then you do not need to use workers' complaints to answer that particular to answer any question in that scenario because the scenario did not talk about what has complained. So you don't want to bring your own hypothesis into the one that Nibosh has already served you with. You want to be very careful. Also, when you're answering a question, like I said, you want to make sure that each point has their own paragraph. Now, what you're doing for each point is you're going to bring your answers. Let's say my answer is the, the rate of incident uh, um, as shown in this scenario proves that their culture is deteriorating or they have a negative culture in uh, um, in total. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, what I did rather is, I picked an indicator of safety culture, which is the number of incidents, and then I linked it to my scenario, which showed that they have increased number of incidents, or I say they have increased near misses, they have increased number of accidents, as the case may be. So I have picked an indicator of health and safety culture, which is incident rate. I have now linked that to my scenario as given to me, which says that they have quite a number of near misses, they have quite a number of accident incidents, and uh, all of that as the case may be. So I bring them together, bring my answer, and then link it to my scenario, and then maybe use one or two lines to prove that they really do have a negative culture as a result of this incident. Basically, that's one point. So I go to the next point, the next point, until I finish answering uh, um, um, the question like that. Remember I said one paragraph, one point, one paragraph, one point. Well, you can also use conjunctions like and also like that, but you might not be able to count your max. But if you think you can, then you can use conju um, conjunctions like the essay, writing in a total essay format. For the people that are written the old syllabus, is like your our explain command word or describe command word. You know, you have to write an essay format using conjunctions or paragraphs, basically. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, for this particular uh, um, syllabus. So the answering technique is very, very, very important. And also, there's going to be a, a word count, the total word count of 3,000 words for the entire examination. 3,000 words for the entire examination. And it's a tolerance of 10 uh, uh, percent. So in total, maximum of 3,300 words. But you want to make sure that you maximize that 3,000 words. Now, each question is going to carry their own word count. So let's say question one has 300 words as their word count. In bracket, if you write more than 330 for that particular question, every word has a 330 would not be marked by your examiner. So you want to make sure that you work in a conference of 300 and then you have a 10 percent tolerance. So basically, you want to be careful. You want to be careful not to have any kind of excessive paraphrase. Go straight to answering the question. Don't start explaining what happened in the scenario. No, go straight to the answer that you have to the question. And then maybe after answering, if you have any other thing you want to add, then you can add as long as it's still within the conference. So that if you want to uh, remove a few things, you're not removing your answer because you're reaching your answers last. You are you're removing those uh, uh, few things that you must have added. So do well to stay uh, I mean, the conference of 300 words so that you don't write things that your examiner would not even have time to read because of uh, policy and uh, all of those things. So that's basically how you answer the question. Like I said, the question will serve to you 10 questions basically for 100 marks using just one uh, um, um, scenario. Okay. So that's the most important thing. I had to get that in the first 12 to 13 minutes, as I can see here. Now, what you need to know is when you get your login details, going back to the uh, um, system, when you get your login details, you need to change your password. After changing your password, on the day of the exam, by 9 a.m., you're going to get the question. So you go back, you log in, you download your questions, download your answer booklet, and you have 24 hours, 24 hours to uh, 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 finish this particular exam. So you're submitting latest by 9 a.m. the next day. Now you want to make sure that you don't wait till 9 a.m. the next day or 8.30, 8.45 so that if you have any kind of network issues, it, it doesn't affect you. If you do not submit by the deadline, there's no way you're submitting ever. It's not a matter of calling your course provider. You're submitting directly to the website, which is controlled by neighbors. No excuse is acceptable. So you have to make sure that you meet that particular 
a deadline. So I advise that. I know I said you have 24 hours, but trust me, when you get the question, 24 hours is all you, is everything. You're going to need every minute of that 24 hours. So I advise that you start very early in the morning and by uh, um, noon, you know, you're almost done and by evening you're done. So you can relax, come back and then we read, you know, first thing in the morning again, you read before you finally submit. Now, one thing is I can say that my video is now 15 minutes, just permit me a few extra minutes. Uh, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure, like I said, to start on time. And one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to submit two documents, two answers. So you're asking the examiner to just pick one. So let's say I have uploaded one last night and this morning I made some corrections. I uploaded another one that would affect you. So what you want to do is you want to you have to delete the one you have uploaded first and then re-upload another one. So you're allowed to do that, you know, before the deadline, you can remove the answers you've uploaded as a book letter you've uploaded and then upload another uh, um, warrant, uh, um, basically. All right. So that's just that about the um, exam um, itself. Now, a few things that you need to know is, you know, students might decide that they want to come to get that, to write the exams or, or uh, uh, this and that. What you want to know is there's a strict rule on plagiarism. So if you come together and their system, and it's not, it's an AI, it's not even the person. So if it detects some client, some pattern or some kind of plagiarism, it will flag all your papers and that would affect all of you. Imagine because of just one line, you have to, you know, face a panel for investigation and then you probably are going to get a five year ban from any Nibosh courses and maybe even some certificates that you already have revoked depending on the disciplinary actions that are taken against you. So you want to stay away from that. Also on plagiarism, like I said, you're allowed to get sources, like from your manual, your notes, and any article. But you're not. what you're not allowed to do is lift from those sources and then put. So the examiner is not going to give you marks for quoting somebody else. They're going to, they want to give you marks for your own ideas. But you can use those articles, you know, like ILO conventions and recommendations, articles from OSHA Academy, articles from HSC UK, you know, all the sources that you can get articles from. So you can just get the ideas from on there and then, you know, translate the idea into your, to, to yours. And then, so when you answer that question, there's going to be a separate uh, uh, um, column or area for references. Now, every article that you consulted, you need to put them down in your references. Not nothing, no different type of references for month or anything. You just need the name of the material, the year was published, and possibly the author of class. You don't need anything uh, uh, um, extra or any kind of expertise to do the references. Since you're not bringing quotes from the uh, um, articles or whatever material. So you have to be very careful with and plagiarism. Now, following your exam, like I said, there's going to be a closing interview, and that closing interview will be done within 14 days after your exam, like I also said earlier in this um, video. Now, when you pick a date for that interview, except you have communicated with your course provider that someone has to be in the room. Like if you're taking care of an old person or you have a child that cannot be on their own for that period, then you have to, like I said, inform your course provider so that the interviewer is also aware. But in a case where that is not uh, uh, um, the situation, you have to show the examiner or the interviewer, excuse me, the room that you are in to make sure nobody else is in that room. You have to have an ID present and then... No materials would also be available. Now, the questions will be strictly uh, from your exam. They're not going to be asking you any question outside your exam or from the syllabus or anything. It's just a simple interview to confirm that you were the one that wrote the exam. So the questions are going to be based on what you have written in your own um, exam. You don't fail the interview. You don't get any marks. And basically, the interviewer just want to prove that you did it. You're not going to get any outcome for, for, of the interview from the interviewer. Just wait for your exam. If it was flagged, you would definitely get a mail from anybody informing you about that. If the interviewer flags you, you might have a follow-up interview from Nibosh to confirm exactly what happened. If you are found guilty, then like, like I said, you're going to be banned from writing any Nibosh exam for the next five years. Okay? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that kind of stress. Okay? So uh, uh, basically, that's how the closing interview will be. You'll also be showing the interviewer at your door. As you can see, do I have two doors? Do they set up my entrance doors? I have to show the interviewer the door that enters into that particular uh, uh, um, area or that particular room so that the interviewer knows that no one is going to come in as the interview 
uh, um, start. So basically, these are all the information I have. I will try to make more videos on answering patterns and um, all of that. As a matter of fact, I already, I'm already way past the 15 minutes that I said I was going to spend for this video. So this is just a simple um, introduction. I wish you um, success in the exam to come. Thank you.